The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 603 The Cobalt King The first sound the chamber allowed Stalley to hear was water. Large concrete culvers set open-mouthed into the walls, high up and spaced uniformly around, drained steadily into a pool that covered the room's entire base, setting a backdrop for a concert that washed away imperfections and disturbances from the environment, but let the true notes rise unhindered into the air. All around the cylindrical walls, metal pipes rose from the pool, standing for no reason or else branching and waving up the dark bricks like vines. At the center of the pool was a pillar, rising to higher than Starlight stood, and the exit in which Starlight stood, once a water pipe like all the others she guessed, looked out at a perfect angle to tell there was something atop it, but not see what. The wall and floor pipe she had been walking on for so long straightened out, forming into an unbroken bridge to the central core, still wavy from side to side, but suddenly neater and more uniform, as if the pipes themselves had decided to become more stable, so no one would stumble or trip. They wanted to be crossed. A low, mournful organ note rose from the core, and Stalit's ears twitched. It was... curious? It beckoned her closer. Ah! The lace voice sounded muted at her side, the rush of waterfalls trying to consciously block her. This wasn't the place where she was meant to speak. Narrowing her eyes, Starlight went the only way she could and crossed to the core. The bridge pipes weren't flush with the central tower's edge, slivering atop it in a perfectly flat, uniform line and finally becoming the source of the notes. A once majestic pipe organ sat on its back, the instrument connected to and the source of the dungeon steel, the tops of its keys facing starlight and playing themselves one by one. A stone throne melted the organ's front, and the creature that lounged atop it was stone and metal too. It had once been a dusk statue, Starlight realized, recognizing the distinctive black stone and regal bearing, even though she didn't think she had ever seen one before. But this one had a different pose, laying on its side and leering at her with a wing outstretched downward, as if its feathers were playing the organ keys and through the most brute force method possible. Its stone limbs and joints had been mercilessly shattered, then reaffixed with studded metal braces, the wounds in the rock left plain for all to see. Its surface was duller, glossiness faded and missing, and she got the impression the statue wanted her to know what it had once been, was telling her how far it had fallen so she knew and could compare. Its gemstone eyes sparkled dimly with pain and vengeance and loathing, and the crystal half-moon crescent on its chest was shattered like it had been pierced through and left in place as another cruel disfigurement. The neck piece was replaced with a choker that braced and augmented its new forced posture. A black crown shoved point first into the metal like it was a spike used to pierce the abomination's neck. All across its remaining surface, tiny needles pierced the rock as well, thin hoses connected to them and snaking into the workings of the organ. Another note played, and almost as if time was flowing backwards, Starlight heard it first, then saw a metal brace holding the thing's feathers together creak, and it actually moved, pressing a key of its own accord with a single stone pinion, and letting the noise fill the air. <sighs> Stolich's eyes widened, but a look at the disgusted horror on Valet's face and the passive indifference on Puddles has told her neither of them had heard it. Warning, the voice she had come to associate with Nightmare Modules said in her mind. Corrupted authentication token presented for daydream communication protocol. Transmissions are quarantined and presented for auditory access only. Administrative permission required to override. No, Starlight internally gasped, shaking her head. 
don't overwrite anything. Whatever this was, she didn't need a special cutie mark to make her spine crawl with danger. Buttles could talk all she wanted, but this thing was deadly. She knew it. What? Starlet whispered under her breath, eyes widening. One of the needles shoved into the statue's cracks pulled slightly, and it seemed to regard her with its dead eyes, the crown stabbing its chest, shining dully. Starlight watched, unable to tear her gaze away in morbid fascination. Each word the thing said was a sound in her mind, all corresponding to notes played on its fell keyboard. I'm um, what? So Puddles, what is this? Starlet hissed backwards. Stanza. Puddles shrugged weakly. So empty. I am so me. What are you talking about, Starlet whispered, though the waterfalls that drowned out everything but Stanza let her speak normally. Valet, are you... Valet? Valet was watching the statue with pinprick eyes, her chin slightly upturned, almost like she was in a trance. As Starlight watched, a thin spark of energy arced across her cutie mark for a millisecond and it was gone, and the muscles around it twitched. Starlight's eyes widened, and she turned back to Stanza. Let her go, she demanded, raising her voice. There's supposed to be a teleporter here. We want to go home. I know you can understand me. Stolic locked eyes with the statue. I want to... Stolic glared. <sighs> And you want me to destroy you or something? Starlight whispered, voice low again. How? My only song. And Teach me. Heal me. Starlight gritted her teeth, looking back to Valet. Her friend didn't seem to have changed. Valet! Starlight stepped between the bad pony and the statue, turning her back on Stanza. Nightmare module thing? Make that be quiet and help me with Valet somehow! Affirmative. Lowering transmission volume. <sighs> Ah! 
Stanza's voice faded in her head until it was barely a whisper, but the notes continued to sound in her ears and the statue continued to play. Pained, wretched, and lonely, they swirled about her, but she brushed them aside, glaring at Valet's almost drooling face. Snap out of it! Putting every inch of her strength and training into a single hoof, she slugged Valet as hard as she could. Valet, wakey, wakey! Puddle stabbed her too, hoof radiating a hint of frost. Gah! Valet jumped, blinking, voice hollow. Bananas, I... Starlight! I... I... Suddenly, Stanza rumbled, and a line of pipes erupted from the tower, shooting like spikes at the far wall. They soared inside of the water pipes, forming a bridge to it, and further inside across the moving liquid, and Stanza's song seemed to beckon to it, growing even more mournful and resigned. I'll... Starlet glanced at the second bridge and swallowed. She wasn't forgetting this any time soon. And if this monstrosity wanted to be destroyed? I will. I promise. The song brightened in something approaching gratitude, though it was an impossible emotion for the instrument and felt more like a slight dimming in negativity. There's the way out, Puddles groaned atop her. Come on, Starlight, cute Valet. Valet blinked, shaking herself before she could slip away again. Y yeah, she mumbled, voice quivering. Let's get out of here, Starlight. Starlight wasted no time in complying, pushing herself as hard as she could go with a limp, grown mare on her back. The bridge led inside the pipe and continued up it a short ways until there was a cracked hole in the ceiling and the metal organ pipe split up, winding over each other to provide a staircase up and out of the tunnel. They hauled themselves into a brick room, stands as dirge, still audible in the distance. It was mostly empty except... Starlight blinked. Is that Arambite's teleporter from Riverfall? Looks kind of like it, Valet murmured, still shaking. Starlight studied the machine quickly. Most of it was the same, though instead of the Harmony extractor hanging from the ceiling she remembered being used to power it, this one just had stands as organ pipes feeding into holes in the side of some casing. Puddles sagged further in relief atop her. That's it, she squeaked, mustering her energy. Stand in the middle of the days, and Puddles will turn it on. Nobody needed further prodding to comply. If they were going to not trust Puddles, the time for that was before going to the bottom and braving Stanza, not after. Valet pressed up alongside Starlight, and Puddles reached for the ground, tapping it, and sending a thin tendril of ice toward the control panel. Flash! Starlight blinked, clearing her eyes as blackness faded from her vision, and the world came back into view. They were on another dais next to another teleportation machine. This one pressed up against a wall to prevent anyone from seeing what powered it. A lone door left the chamber, its bricks far neater and cleaner than the ones in Stanza's room, and the door was well lit and heavily barred from their side. Oh, bananas! Valley gasped at her side, falling down and rolling off the teleporter dais. Oh, bananas! We're not there anymore! It's over! It's like I can breathe again! <sighs> bananas! I think I'm gonna cry! Starlight moved to her side, closed her eyes, and hugged her for all she was worth. End of chapter 603